Good evening, this is Doc Hatfield, Preacher Man Piper. When I first got out of the service, I came home on a, and, and arrived home on a Wednesday. Well, the church had services, my dad's church had services on Wednesday night. And so I went to church with them and uh, he asked me, he said, would you play us a special on the piano? Uh, before the preaching, and I said, sure, be glad to. Well, I sat down and, and played, and it astounded about everybody. They didn't know that I was a lot better than I was when I left because I'd been in service for a few years. And so after I played one number, they wanted me to play another one, so I played another one. Well, after a couple of months, I met a girl. And we started dating. And uh, things were going on pretty good with her. One day, her dad invited me to stay for supper and we went out in the backyard and we sat around the table out in the backyard and, and uh, uh, we had us a big glass of tea and he said to me, he said, I wanted to talk to you, son, he said, because, uh, well, he said, just frankly, I heard that you was kind of a wild boy when you was growing up around here, he said. Uh, and I'm just trying to figure out what you are now. And I looked at him and I said, well, I can tell you right now, I'm not wild, but I'm meaner than heck. I said, so if, if you're sizing me up, whether I should keep dating your daughter or not, uh, that's entirely up to you. Nobody will respect her more. Nobody will treat her better. We kind of like each other. Don't know where it's going to go from there. I am in the ministry. I have been doing some evangelistic work since I've been home. And uh, uh, so I said, you, uh, you just have to make up your own mind. And uh, he looked at me and he said, I like that, boy, I like that. I just like that. I, I like that. I'm just telling you now, I like that. He said, being straight with me like that, he said, you okay with me? I'm going to tell you for sure. Let's go fishing. I said, well, I like to fish, so let's go. He said, I'll tell you what, he said, Saturday morning, let me pick you up. He said, I'll pick you up at, at your house and said, uh, we'll go fishing. I said, well, what time you going to pick me up? He said, oh, about 6 o'clock. And I said, that'll be fine. I said, I'll be up. Probably had a cup of coffee or two. I said, be ready to go. So we went fishing. 
Well, we get out, we get out where we're going to go fishing, and he has to put his boat in the in the lake. You see, yeah, and and, uh, uh, and so when he got ready to do that, he took off up there to get his get his vehicle and back his boat down, get it put it in the water. Well, I'm standing down there uh, at at the at the water's edge, and I'm just looking out. I mean, it's a beautiful morning, and I'm looking out at the water, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I am hit. Somebody backed into me and hit me. I mean, just forcibly hit me, knocked me right out in the water. Well, I got a, I got myself up. Of course, I'm just wringing wet from head to toe, and I come out of there, and uh, I uh, uh, some people run down there real quick with some towels and stuff, and started helping me get dried off. And this fella. He come to me and apologized and apologized and apologized and apologized. He said, I wasn't paying attention. I should have been paying attention. He said, I wasn't paying attention. I said, well, as much my fault was yours, let's forget all about it. He said, you sure, you're sure a nice fella. He said, I'm telling you for sure. Well, that just, that just gave me a lot of kudos with the father there of this girl. Well, this girl and I started, we started kind of getting a little serious, and I went on there for about, I don't know, a couple of months, and and uh, and I got me a job at the Levi Strauss Company. And I would do that job when I wasn't doing doing revivals, and that was the deal that we made. If I had a revival to do, I'd go off and do it, and then I'd come back and work. That's, that's fine with them. So anyway, I was walking down through there, and there was I had to lay uh, material, material on a big round roll. I had to lay that out on a table and run that all the way down the table, and that table was, I don't know, a good 50 foot long. And it was a, it was about uh, six foot wide, if I can remember correctly. It was about six foot wide. Well, you had to make sure that it was all even all the way down through there, but you had to run it down through there as fast as you could because you had to get a layer all oh, about that thick. I mean... Layered. And then what they did, they come in with big cutters, and they cut out all those blue jeans that everybody wears. And so uh, I had been doing that for, for a couple of months off and on, and one day I was walking down through there and just crumbled in the floor and passed out. Just crumbled in the floor passed out. Well, I woke up in the hospital, and my mother and dad was there, and this girlfriend was there, and come to find out, uh, after they did some tests and stuff, they come in and told me, they said, uh, uh, Mr. Hatfield said, I'm sorry to tell you. But you have got phlebitis. I said, I had some fleas bite what? He said, no. He said, this is a condition of blood clots that are in your leg. Have you been hit in any way or fell in any way? And on and on. And I said, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, yes. I was a, 
I was kind of knocked out into the water a little bit. Got a little wet. And I said, and, and, and as a matter of fact, it hit me right in the legs. And he said, well, sir, he said, that's what caused it. He said, you're going to be laid up for several weeks. Not going to be able to walk. And we'll do what we can to dissolve these things without having to operate. I said, all right. Well, they did. They dissolved them. He said, now, here's your problem, Miss Atfield. You can always have trouble with blood clots in that leg. It was in my right leg. <laughs> Had to think a minute. It was in my right leg. I said, okay. I said, what does that mean? Well, I had to take care of myself, do this, do that, and whatever. I said, okay. Well, about, about a month later, uh, I was at home, and on a Sunday evening, I was down at the church, and I was sitting down at the piano, and I was just playing songs, one song after another song. And there were several girls down there around the piano, and there was there was quite a few women sitting right there on the front row and the second row listening to me play and asking me to play this song and that song and just having a great old time, you know. And all of a sudden, now back in the back come my girlfriend. And she stayed back there. She usually come up, but she stayed back there. Well... The service started, and we had the service. We ended the service, and and uh, I told Dad, I said, Dad, I said, I'm going to take my girlfriend. I said, we'll, we'll meet you at the A&W if that would be all right. He said, yeah, it's all right. So I went and got her, and I said, let's go. We'll, go, we'll meet Mom and Dad at the A&W. And, and all the rest of them, because a lot of times something many of the church people would go down to the A&W and, and uh, get something to eat after church. So here we are, we're down there, we're getting something to eat, and, and uh, we get done, and my girlfriend said, I need to talk to you. I said, well, just, what is it? She said, you have a choice to make. I said, I have a choice to make. This could be interesting. What's the choice? Me or the piano? I said, what are you talking about? I mean, you're going to have to choose between me and the piano. If you want the piano, if you want to play the piano, if you want to be down there playing the piano and have all them people down there uh, around you and they're laughing and going on and, and singing and all that stuff, then you can have that, but you can't have me. If you want me, you got to give up the piano. And she said, I know I'm asking a lot, but she said, you just stop and think about it now, because she said, uh, it's either it's either me or it's the piano. Well, I'm, you know, I'm driving her home, see, and so we get to her house, and she said, uh, you can let me know sometime this week what the answer will be. Well, I like this girl. I mean, I really like this girl. I thought maybe we might have something on a more permanent basis later on. So anyway, I got her to the house, and I got out of the car, and I walked around the car, and I opened the car door, and she got out, and I walked her up to the door. And she come toward me to get a little kiss before she went in. And I stepped back, and I looked at her, and I said, I just hope and pray you have a wonderful life. And I started to walk off. She said, what do you mean by that? I turned around and looked at her. I said, honey, let me tell you this. 
God gave me that talent to play that piano. He didn't give me you. I chose you. Have a good life. Bye-bye. <laughs> and I, I was gone. <laughs> there wasn't no, no choosing of whether I was going to play the piano or whether I was going to have her. I mean, she was a pretty thing, and we probably would have enjoyed a lot more than what we did enjoy, but there wasn't going to be no choosing. If you couldn't take me the way I am and what I am, you can't have me at all. So that was the end of a little courtship. And uh, the only thing I got out of it was phlebitis. And I've lived with that phlebitis all my life. Be times that this leg would hurt so bad I couldn't walk on it for a while. But it's been better here these last probably 10 years. So... When you, have, when you have a love of your life, like I have of the piano and of the organ, don't give it up for some floozy. <laughs> don't give it up at all, okay? Well, I hope that the good Lord watch over you and protects you and take care of you and supply your every need and take care of every circumstance in your life. Remember, I'm praying for you. So until I see you again, I pray that everything goes well, that you enjoy your pipe, that you enjoy your tobacco, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.